Welcome to this episode of Lab Chat. This is Dale with Thermo Fisher Scientific. And here we are looking at circulating tumor cells and how to identify them, how to isolate them, how to analyze them. To that end, we have Dr. Mitch Garcia from Cytolumina, which is a spin out from University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, this is from Dr. Uh, Sang's lab. They've been working on a platform for isolating circulating tumor cells. And they recently published this work using an Arcturus laser capture micro dissection instrument. It was a key step in the identification and isolation of CTCs. Mitch, thank you for joining us today. And what can you tell me a little bit about this new device that you're developing? Sure. So one of the technologies we developed in our, in our lab was to use nano substrates as a way to make cells have a higher affinity towards um, surfaces. And so what we've developed is, is to kind of create these nanosurfaces, we use a term called nano velcro, and that kind of gives us the sense where you have the cell attached to, to this um, new nano nano surface. And so, what we were developing in the lab is we wanted to somehow not only capture cells. So, with the nano velcro, you can capture cells, but we want to be specific for cell types. And circulating tumor cells are very different biologically speaking than white blood cells and, and other types of cells. And so, what we do is we also modify the surface of these substrates to have um, an antibody for the cases of prostate cancer or, or breast cancer. We want to modify that with EPCAM because EPCAM will become a selectively um, enriching for those types of cells. Yes, so this EPCAM is an antibody and you're coating these nanostructures or the Velcro with the antibody for capture, is that correct? Right. And uh, ideally, although there's a lot of different companies that can capture cells and they can count cells, what we want to do is kind of move on beyond that. And what we did was we took advantage of this new new system, the Arcturus system, to be able to, to isolate cells. And so what we created was we used um, normal laser micro dissection slides, which is what the Arcturus system uses. But what we've done is actually coated it with our nano velcro. So here's a, a slide of a, a laser micro dissection slide. And what you can see is there's some sort of iridescent film on it. The iridescence is from the ordered array of nano velcro that is what is sticky too for the cells. Uh huh. I see. And then the sample then is flowed over. Yeah, exactly. So what we do is we have a PDMS top that is it's a serpentine um, top, and what we do is we place it on top of the nano velcro, and we'll flow it through a chip holder, something that Cyaluminous specifically designed to kind of make the user operation very simple. Mm hmm. And then as far as from that point, you've got a decent amount of capture. Is it very specific in terms of the cells that you want versus... It's very specific with the use of EPCAM, but unfortunately, although the nanofalcid then tends to be sticky, uh, sticky we'll actually um, collect a lot of background cells as well. So finally, at the end, we do need to do amino staining to correctly identify uh, CTCs from white blood cells. And so we'll, have a, we'll use a fluorescent marker. And the Arcturus system is very um, compatible with that. It'll let you be able to use the fluorescence of, of your choice. So for, for us, we use Tritzy to identify CTCs, and we use Fitzy, which is the green, too, uh, for identifying white blood cells. I see. And then as far as once you've identified uh, several CTCs that you wanted to get, and then what happens? So what, the, what we do is, is with the Arcturus system, there's two lasers. There's an IR laser, and there's a UV laser. And with the IR laser... Once we've identified the cells, we'll use an, the, the IR laser to kind of um, poke a sticky finger onto the surface of, of our substrate. That's the best way to describe it. And what that sticky uh, finger does is it, it holds on to the area surrounding the circulating tumor cell. And then the UV laser will cut it. And what will happen is that the selected cells will lift up and we'll take the, that's, that lifted cells, we'll put it into an Eppendorf tube, we'll spin it down, and then we'll move on to our whole genome amplification steps. So here, this particular system, since you're separating cells out in sort of two-dimensional space, along with the fluorescent tag, you're able to identify that single one for downstream analysis. How does that compare then to alternative methods? I, I'm thinking, say, of flow sorting as an option. All right, that's a good question. So with flow sorting, um, flow sorting works similar. And unfortunately, with, uh, with flow, if you don't have a large enough sample where you don't, where we're talking about tens of thousands of CTCs, that's where that application would be ideal. But with circulating tumor cells, we're talking about one or two cells in, in two or ten milliliters of lead. This is, it's just not the right 
technology to solve that problem. Although you could try to think of a solution to work around it, it's just really not amenable for it. I see. You have the needle in the haystack problem. Exactly. It could be, you mentioned, one in a million, one in 10 million. You just... It's it's larger than that, it can be. So <laughs> Larger than that, okay. <laughs> so if you're looking at one in a hundred million, <laughs> how do you pull that out? Now I'm trying to think of what does a hundred million needles look like or one in a hundred million hay, anyway. It's, it's a, exactly, it's difficult. With the process of nano velcro to, to have the cells attached to the surface in order to make it specific, we use the EPCAM. And with the final amino staining, it's enough where we can identify the CTCs from the white blood cells. So we're very fortunate that using all of that um, three layers of process to get to where we need, we're able to, in the end, have single CTCs that we can undergo a genetic analysis with. Yeah, I read this uh, 2013 advanced materials paper. It was really interesting work. And they actually had some preliminary uh, whole exome sequencing data downstream from the capture uh, can you comment on sort of further improvements since that paper came out? Right. So that was a, a major offense. So a lot of times people haven't previously been able to do whole genome and whole exome sequencing on CTCs using samples. And we were able to, to do it repeatedly and we've been able to do it reproducibly. And we've been deploying these units to different other um, key players in, in, in the field and around the world. Thank you, Mitch, for sharing your work with our audience today. If any of you have questions for him, simply use our lab chat hashtag. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the Arcturus Laser Capture Microdissection System, simply click here. And lastly, if you're interested in doing a lab chat with us, feel free to contact us using any of our social channels.